Um, and now it is my pleasure to introduce uh, kind of the tourism team here. Um, we have both the New Mexico Tourism Department and Keller Stewart. And together, these guys could do just about anything. Um, I had the pleasure of, of working with all of them um, before I started as the chamber director. And it was, uh, it was a really great time, but it was, uh, it was a really wonderful, productive time uh, to be a part of the team and, and, and work on tourism for Los Alamos. It was um, a really exciting thing for me to do, so it's a real pleasure to have all of these folks here today. Um, so let me just give you a little bit of background on all of these folks. Um, I'll start with uh, Taylor Lawrence. Uh, she graduated from Oklahoma Christian University with a degree in journalism. But after her first job after college, quickly fell in love with the world of digital marketing. Taylor worked in various industries developing and implementing digital marketing strategies before finally settling into tourism and destination marketing. She joined the New Mexico Tourism Department team in January <coughs> of this year from the Oklahoma City Convention and Visitors Bureau. As the marketing communications specialist for New Mexico True, Taylor aims to help push forward the organic digital marketing strategy with the help of state partners. Welcome. <laughs> Next to Taylor is Brianna Gallegos. She joined the Team True as the Public and Industry Relations Coordinator in 2017. She graduated from our own UNM with a BA in Mass Communications and Journalism. After graduation, she set off for Texas to be a reporter and fill in anchor for the CBS 7 News in West Texas. After coming back to the state she loves the most, Brianna worked for KRQB covering general news. Today she works to gain positive media coverage for New Mexico by liaising, I had to practice that word a couple of times out loud, with industry partners throughout the state. Brianna oversees six regional marketing boards and helps promote the authentic, pure beauty of our land. Brianna was born and raised in northern New Mexico. She takes pride in her small town New Mexico roots. With over 20 years in hospitality industry experience, a master's degree in resort and tourism management. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I lost my segue. I lost my segue. I know that about you. Okay. Thank you, Brianna. <laughs> Uh, Andrea Lawrence, no relation to Taylor. Uh, all right, down at the end there. Uh, with over 20 years of hospitality industry experience, a master's degree in resort and tourism management, and an incurable case of wanderlust, Andrea brings her appreciation for travel to everything she does. Uh, Andrea Lawrence, her first tour moved from Breckenridge, Colorado, where she worked in marketing, sales, and operations at a 500 room resort and conference center to her position as tourism sales manager with Visit Las Cruces as going from the freezer to the furnace. She is now happily situated at the state tourism office in more temperate environment of Santa Fe, where she has to ski and mountain bike a lot to work, uh, to work off all of the amazing cuisine and craft beverages. That's all good. Uh, today she'll provide an overview of New Mexico's of New Mexico True and talk about how we can leverage the power of our state's popular brand. And then, uh, in a very small font, uh, <laughs> Kelly Stewart, our own Kelly Stewart, is the marketing specialist with the Los Alamos County's Economic Development Division. In this role, she manages the county's tourism and branding initiatives, provides public outreach, and creates marketing reports and materials for economic development and is the designated Los Alamos Film Liaison with the State Film Office. Uh, for tourism, she manages the Tourism Marketing Services contract with Sunny 505, that was uh, previously Griffin and Associates, and the Visitor Center Management Operations contract with LACDC's Discover Los Alamos program. She is also a member of the New Mexico Hospitality Association and serves on the New Mexico Tourism Department's North Central Regioning Marketing Board. <laughs> Um, she worked directly with most of the panelists from the New Mexico Tourism Department to establish Los Alamos as a New Mexico true destination that has hosted the governor uh, and regional events as a result, or something like that. Thank you, Bianca. <laughs>
Okay. I will let these folks take it away now. Hashtag New Mexico True, 
if you just look at that, you can see that there are people talking about Los Alamos other than just us. And you can reach out to people and say, hey, I'm glad you enjoy going to Bandelier, but have you tried this restaurant in Los Alamos as well? And just kind of leverage your brand that way as well. And it's organic, people are already talking about it. It's a strong brand, and so. Um, next is our email distribution. Um, we currently have a total of um, over 180 thousand subscribers in six interest segments and again with our social media it makes feel really big and so um, if you have something interesting going on in your business or in your community and you want us to know about it so you can be considered for our newsletters or even our social media just reach out to us because we are constantly looking for those things because we don't want to send three culinary emails with the same restaurants every time we want to really spread love to the whole state and to some of the people that may not be, you know, White Sands or Albuquerque. Or we want to give love to everybody, every single one of our partners. Um, and in case you guys aren't subscribed, here's just a little uh, example of what our newsletters look like. It has a really great video, and um, depending on the type of email that we're sending out, it's got um, great photo and just some information about either an <coughs> event, a city, a, a, yeah, can't think of words. Um, <laughs> festivals? Yeah. I was thinking experiences is what I was thinking of. Got there. All right. <laughs> um, and lastly, I wanted to talk about our regional event spread. Um, here's just a couple of examples of some of the ones that we've done in the past. Um, it's in New Mexico Magazine, and so what we do is we put this, this really captivating image um, to stop people as they're flipping. And we do anywhere between 8 to 13 events. And again, this is where I really need your guys' help, because I don't want to list a whole bunch of events in one city or two cities. I take it upon myself to get yeah, at least one event from each one of New Mexico's regions it's a little bit hard when I have to go, okay, central New Mexico. Oh, they didn't list their event on their website. Let me make a list of every single city in central New Mexico. Do they have a website? It's just so much easier and you're top of mind when you reach out to us and say, hey, we have this really cool event. And I'm like, okay, got it written down on my list. And when I go to my list, you get the top of mind. However, the only downside is it works on New Mexico Magazine's publishing schedule. So I'm already working on August. So New Mexico Magazine does three months in advance. So it kind of makes it a little bit better if you have an annual event that you guys already know is going to happen. Um, it's a lot easier for you to say, hey, every September we do this. When I'm working on September, when I'm looking at my events to add. Um, and I was also told that, um, maybe just to add a couple, for people who are working on social media and working on building their own social media platforms and brands, just to add a couple of tools that um, I think are use useful. Um, so these are tools that I actually use, and I use them because they are free. Um, because I'm a good steward of taxpayer dollars. So. Um, Hootsuite is what I use to schedule all of our social media. It's a great free tool if you just want to set it and forget it, which if you have a ton of things to do like I do, it's awesome. Um, Bitly is really great if you want to know where people are getting the links from. So if I put out a Bitly link, it'll tell me how many people clicked on it from Instagram, from Twitter, from your website, from anywhere. It'll tell you where people are coming from. Um, TweetDeck is another great tool. If you want to see people who are talking about your business or Los Alamos online, all you do is you sign up for a free TweetDeck account, you tell it what you want to monitor, and it'll show you every single person that has mentioned Los Alamos or your business, and it's free. Um, Canva is, if you're like me and you're not a graphic designer, and you want to put out a really stunning graphic, you just drag, drop, type, Save. It's great. Um, and then Adobe Spark is the same. 
Um, and then if then, then that is a way to just really streamline your social media efforts. So if you post on Facebook, you tell it to also post on Twitter. And it will do all that for you. And that way you don't even have to go into all the different native platforms. Um, and I think that's my last slide. Um, and I just wanted to do it really briefly because a lot of these things are case by case. So if you guys ever want more information on how do I get listed on your website or how do I get considered for a regional event spread or anything like that, just come and talk to me. I'll give you my card. I'd love to talk to you because I know not, it's not one size fits all for everyone. So I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Fun as Taylor's <laughs> stuff, but um, 
yeah, it's a lot of information. I have my cards up here. If you have any questions, please come talk to me. Happy to talk about uh, tax dollars offsetting the tax burden because that's really what we do and a huge role that we play in the, I mean, in the tourism department is really making sure that we bring in those tourists, we captivate them. We don't want them just here for one day. How can we expand their time? In New Mexico, we are the fifth largest state. We have 33 different counties. How can we make sure that they go to more than one county during that time? And then also bring in journalists to help us get that message in a broader level. Thank you. All right, so they pretty much said everything I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to re repeat too much, but. I am also on the marketing team and I oversee two of uh, the departments, I like saying those most popular programs. Um, <laughs> cooperative marketing and advertising gets popular because we give away money. I know that, it's not about me. <coughs> and New Mexico True Certified, which is our 100% made in New Mexico program. I am also responsible for brand development, which means that anything that doesn't fit into anyone else's bucket falls into my desk. I love that. And I just, I'm going to, I guess, talk through some broad, I have a, a long experience in, in marketing and some of the kind of go broad strokes and then a little bit more into what we do. And I am, um, I expect you to play along, so I brought, I usually bring participation candy, but it kind of melted, and so <laughs> <laughs> I have lip balm today. <laughs> Keep that in mind. So I have. Uh, if you heard in my bio, I spent most of my adult life living in Colorado and New Mexico and traveling around a lot of western states and I did live in a resort community for a long time and when I <coughs> drove into Los Alamos for the first time I was charmed, I love to be surrounded by mountains and I see all the makings of a really thriving economy here. You have locally owned shops and restaurants, you have a charming Main Street quaint city park right in the middle of town. To me, you're like, the, you're like a resort town in the making, even right down to your unaffordable housing. <laughs> I'm not going for you. Um, so I want to talk about what you can do individually and collectively um, to be more successful. And I, as I said, I, this may be stating a number of obvious things. And so I'll pretend I'm talking to more of the high school students in the room who might not have a lot of experience in marketing, like some of you who have been running your own businesses for some time. So I love that what you have here in Los Alamos is a really solid foundation. Um, you have visionary leadership, you have engaged stakeholders. I, I come here and I, I see it, I see it in this room every time I run into these ladies from the county, um, from the CDC, from the chamber. And so you have great representation, you're really fortunate for that, that make, creates a cohesive community. And I, I think to, to both Taylor and Brianna's point, um, coming together, collaborating, having, um, it, it, it does a lot to, to help us talk about your story and then to share that with the, the greater, the, the world at large, whether that's through journalists or individuals and social media. So you're the gateway, of course, to three national parks. I don't think, I, I'm pretty, quite certain there's nowhere else in New Mexico that can say that. So you, um, you have that distinction. And you have a lot of low-hanging fruit. You have people, thousands, right, thousands of people who are traveling here every single day to work. And you're within an hour, 45 minutes, of a tourist mecca unto itself. And it's our own you know, urban area down in uh, Santa Fe. So I think this is a really opportune moment. You are, we're on the cusp of summer season, which I'm sure is very big for you. And it's great I want to see, um, would like to talk about what kind of new ideas you have or what things you're experimenting with to implement for summer season to capitalize on all the tourists that are coming to this area. For national parks, it's great to see your concert series um, that's, that's bringing people up here or keeping them here after they get off work or a reason to sit in the park and enjoy some music, sunset. I'll be back in two weeks. Um, <laughs> side note, Big Head Todd used to play for free at the Student Union at CU Boulder when I was there <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> so, um, again, yeah, just, just kudos to you all. The other thing that um, your 
representatives do, those people sitting in this room, is um, squeeze the juice out of the New Mexico Tourism Department like nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get money, you get technical expertise, you get knowledge, you get wayfinding. There is nobody like Los Alamos that really uh, leverages the New Mexico True brand and is an incredible partner for us in terms of being a New Mexico True community on from the very beginning. So thank you all for what you do. So I uh, want to take a look, actually share with you some high level things at the, at the department are basically like our, our what, how, and why. And so what we do is obviously promote tourism to and within New Mexico. And how we do that is by making it a primary destination for venturesome travelers. And we define venturesome travelers as people with a spirit for adventure and a thirst for authenticity. It's really important that we have honed in, and since I guess the, the birth of New Mexico through eight or so years ago, that we did a lot of research, that we did focus groups, that we learned some hard things to hear about ourselves, um, but that they gave us the opportunity to craft a message that was meaningful to people, that could change perceptions about the way people think about New Mexico. And so we adhere to four strategic planks. We build a magnetic brand, and you saw that in a lot of Taylor's images. We are all about arresting imagery. And we know from research and what people, hearing what people thought about us, that we needed to show them we weren't just a dry, barren desert with nothing to do. And so what you see in our images a lot of times is water, green, snow. That works really well for you here. Las Cruces does not like that at all, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so we build a magnetic brand, and then we unify and lead the industry. And that's um, a, a large part of what Brianna does with the six regional marketing boards, is bringing people together. And, and, and what we do as a department, using the New Mexico True brand, so that we are all so that what we're not doing is fighting with one another. No, stay in Los Alamos. No, stay in Taos. No, stay over here. But that we're going out to the world saying, stay in New Mexico. Because first we have to get to people to realize that we're a state. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that, that they should be coming here. So we also inspire in state pride and advocacy. What we want to see is people talking about things that are made in New Mexico, about um, their, their pride and their sense of place, that uh, we also in our department house New Mexico Clean and Beautiful or Keep New Mexico True program. And so we, we want to see people keeping their places clean because I always say no one goes back to a dirty destination unless it's New Orleans. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're not New Orleans, and so we have to keep our, our places clean. <laughs> so, and it's also about saying, oh, we're having a family reunion this year. Why don't you all come to us instead of let's go to Cobra? Um, and, and then we require rigor. And so we, I don't want to quite say demand. We ask nicely, all of, <laughs> all of our partners, to report back to us um, what are you doing? If you got grant funds, how did those work for you? What are your success measures? What can we do to continue that impact and make it and, and grow it exponentially? And I also want to talk a little bit about the why. And I actually want to ask you all about your why. So this is that's what we do, that's how we do it. But has anybody ever heard of Simon Sinek or seen his TED Talk? Um, so he's written <laughs> People in the room were at Simon's neck. He wrote a book called Start with Why, and uh, and other great another great book as well. Others, um, but he said, and, and he has a TED talk. So you can look it up. You can run back to your desk, look up his TED talk, 18 minutes. Um, he said, people don't buy what you do; they buy why you do it. And and if you keep peeling away the layers of the onion to get to the why of what you do. I work at the tourism department because I believe that travel has the power to change the world. That's kind of lofty, I know, but <laughs> it's, it's the re I'm sorry, I actually don't get out of bed every morning for tax dollars. I know some people in our department do. <laughs> our former cabinet secretary was one of them. Um, but I get up because I love to travel and I love to share the place that I live and I think that New Mexico, we can all agree, is like a spiritual place. Um, it has an impact on people when they leave here. 
And so I'm going to share my lip balm. If anybody can tell me their why about um, why you why you own your business, why you work for who you work for. Tell me. Tell me why. You want to say something? I say South Georgia. 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 Yeah. Uh, the why is the whole reason I'm in business. <coughs> people to <coughs> share. Um, with them, why Los Alamos, you know, why Los Alamos is here, why it's important, and, and actually who we are, mm -hmm. um, who and what, what we are. It's unique, and yet we have some, lots of ties to the rest of New Mexico, even though we're populated with people who are from other places in many cases. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I do it so they can see. Uh, for themselves. and see for themselves, make their own decisions, have discussions about, you know, of course here we have a big why, um, you know, why. Yeah. Why Los Alamos exists? <laughs> yeah, why, why is this place in not thriving? This is a place of death. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I... Uh, Does everybody know Dorota? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, Linda. So I leverage where Georgia starts. People know about Los Alamos because of the Manhattan Project, but my why is to help people understand what Los Alamos National Laboratory is today mm -hmm. and how it's affecting the, the nation and the world in security issues and keeping us safe. Um, and um, learning new things about our world and leveraging those for a better tomorrow. Um, so I'm able to suck those people in that come here because of the Manhattan Project and they leave the Bradbury Science Museum saying, wow, that's amazing. And it's going on right here in right Los now. Alamos, New Mexico. 88,000 people a year. Yeah. Good. And tell us who you are and who you're with. I'm Carolyn Moore with uh, Nurses with Heart Home Care. And uh, my why is that that uh, we tap into medical tourism. So people come from all over the world and um, they want to come to New Mexico and we offer senior sitting. So if you come with your loved ones, those, those kids that come who are in their 60s and 70s, bring their, their moms and dads who are in their 80s and 90s, we will sit with them while they go to Baton Rouge, while they come to Los Alamos, while they explore Santa Fe. And uh, we can take care of their needs. Thank you for sharing. That's an incredible service that visitor centers should know about. And I'll talk a little bit more about how maybe to tell people you exist. You are. Tell us who you are, where you're from. <coughs> My name is Karen Womega. I um, newly started this position with the Aspen Ridge Assisted Living. And I want to share since I've been here, you know, like taking this position a year and a half and going out and get to talk with Ren and Rufina. Um, the why I do what I do is, I see there is, um, Aspen Ridge Assisted Living is the only assisted living on the hill. And I like what I do because I feel like it's a way of giving back to the community. Our popula population is getting older and a lot of people don't know about it because it's so hidden in the back. It's for some place for them to go, you know, when as they age in place and they don't want to stay at their house anymore. We have the facility that can help our older population to strive during the elderly years. And so I do it because just to give it back to Los Alamos, even though I'm not from here, but I, I'm here and my husband has been here for 11 years after that. So instead of going down the hill, you know, to look for some place to put their loved one, you know, there's an Aspen Ridge Assistant Living that can help the community take care of them. So I'm with the bank, so tourism, I, I don't directly, but indirectly support um, the businesses. Um, this is my adoptive home. Um, I have no interest in going back to Oregon. Um, I'm interested in the economic development aspect. Um, tourism is going to be growing for Los Alamos, which is a challenge because we have this secret lab across the land we don't really want to be for sometimes. 
Um, but for me, um, I have a frustration economically. We talk about tax dollars, so we have billions of dollars literally that come into the state. We get the most dollars from the treasury, um, but they don't stay here. And so we are, Century Bank is one of the last local banks. We employ local, we invest local, um, so, and for me, it's invested here. And I'm working for an organization that vests locally in the businesses and in terms of so. Thank you all for sharing. appreciate that because it's, it's a profound thing to share your why. And, and as, whoop, one more, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> 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 Please. Uh, yeah. I own C.B. Fox at the department store here, which twice in New Mexico magazine has wound up uh, being chosen as one of the really nifty small town stores that exists in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Most recently, two years ago, I guess. But at any rate, I got here by accident, and I won't try to explain that. Uh, I, learned, I used to work for other, other people, and I decided to really like ideas and uh, as opposed to just holding a job. And so uh, I wanted up the chance to buy this department store, uh, not ever having been in retail before, but it's it's flowered as something different than I expected it to be. And uh, in terms of personal uh, interest and uh, caring about and that is how we treat people. Well, we have an opportunity to talk to a lot of people in this town uh, and have for 40 years and and so we kind of act as a, I'm going to use a, a hyperbole, a, a joy spreader. <laughs> okay. uh, we really do treat people well, including tourists, and we've had people, tourists, come to us and say what an unusual experience it is to be in our store, not necessarily because of just what they uh, receive, but how they receive. And uh, I don't know how to use that to, to <laughs> in your various uh, uh, ways of, of communicating about New Mexican stores and people and so forth. I'm sure you're interested in discovering better how we can tie into what you do. Good. Thank you. Good segue. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> and, and it's great. I, when I was growing up, my family had a small retail business on a main street in the town where I lived. And I don't think I ever saw us as a part of the tourism industry, but you absolutely are. And I think kudos to you because I know that you're involvement in the community is much further reaching than just opening your doors and, and selling things to people. And to that end, I'd like to also, you know, think about, um, well, I think a, a couple things. Um, one of those is collaboration, and, and I'll come back to that. But I have two cliches or two adages that, that speak to your point and, or, or at least they have places to start and then where we can pick up, if you will. And one of those is you have to be present to win. And so showing up here today is a really great start. Taking advantage of the Chamber of Benefits is a great start. Getting to know your neighbors, leaving your store or your bank or, or your service organization and walking out in downtown um, and seeing and, and in and out of these shops and talking to people on a daily basis, making <coughs> sure that the students who work in these stores on the weekend or part time know about your tour business or know that you serve visitors who come to town, not just locals. And so staying open is a huge thing. Um, and I think that often in smaller communities we see a cycle of like, I tried to stay open and nobody came and nobody came and so I closed and they came and you were closed. It's, and so what, um, what we recommend, especially again moving into the summer season, make a commitment for six months or till the end of October or whatever it is, to be present. 
to be open. It may cost a little bit more on the front end, it may take a while for people to figure it out, but eventually I think that you'll, you'll see that, especially when you have special events in town like Science Fest or music concerts, that people are going to be looking for somewhere to eat, somewhere they're not quite ready to go home, somewhere they need to be between work and the time it starts, or something like that. Um, so think about that. Also, cliche number two, you, can, you get out what you put into it. Um, so participating in your community, being on boards, um, volunteering, students, talking to students, mentoring, that kind of thing, I think is a, is a great way to get seen and involved um, and collaborate. And I think that we're seeing so much, so many different things happening in terms of collaboration now where you um, invite you just to think about things differently. I never thought I would see, I never thought I'd be doing yoga at a brewery, right? But now a brewery is a place where yoga classes happen all the time. And, <laughs> and that is a shift in a mindset. So if you have a space, um, and I see great art on these walls, maybe you have a space where you could put up a local artist's work and have an opening. And that would bring people in who didn't know about you before. It may give you an event you can put on our website, something for Brianna to talk about. Um, and, and so again, these things may start small, but eventually um, they will grow and people will know about them. If you do have a tourism related business or an, even an ancillary related business, I would encourage you to make sure that people know you exist. And we can do that from like a digital standpoint, um, but who said it? So uh, seeing is, is believing, having a hands on experience is memorable, that's going to last and it builds a connection. And so if, um, just my train of thought. I was thinking, we, when I was in the industry, we used to host hospitality nights. And so open your doors and invite um, everyone who interfaces with the public and think about the, your communities outside of Los Alamos. So invite Santa Fe Visitor Information Center staff, invite Uber drivers, invite tour operators, invite hotel front desk staff, restaurant servers, anybody you can <coughs> if you want to spread the word about what it is that you do and you want to be, like Taylor said, you want to be top of mind. People aren't going to go around digging to find out about something, but present it with an opportunity, create an experience, serve a little food, and people will show up, right? <laughs> so those are the, um, I think those are, those are some things, obvious things, but that we just may not employ often enough. And, uh, I'm going to, let's see, I, so I think on that note actually I'll stop and I can pass out more lip balm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, I'm just going to give Kelly time to talk and stop talking the floor. Um, but with that, what kind of ideas do you all have about what you want to do differently or what you think you could do with your neighbors or what you've been like, oh, I want to try that but I just have never, I haven't had time or I don't know where to start. We have yoga at the nature center. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the nature center. Sure. Um, what do you want to know? <laughs> um, what would you want us to know? Well, what do you want everybody in the room to know about you? How many people have been to the nature center? Woo! Awesome, awesome. If you haven't stopped by, um, we're a free museum, which I think is one of our biggest assets, and most of the programs we offer are super low cost or free. Um, like every Monday morning, we have Nature Playtime, sponsored by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Um, for zero to five-year-olds, they just come play at the Nature Center. There's a different topic every week that one of our educators leads. Um, so there's really events for people that are zero all the way up to seniors. Um, diversity of hikes, classes. Um, I'm amazed since I started working here how much we have going on. It seems like in the summer, almost every day we have an event. So. Yeah. Rachel, can yeah. you tell them about the, uh, we have a huge influx of students that oh, come sure. in the summer, mm -hmm. and they're putting together a really neat program this year that you all should know about. Yeah, so um, out of the Discoveries Action Team, um, which the county's leading, um, one of the goals that we set was to better include summer students in the community. So I worked with Lauren McDaniel and Ken Neville first to make some just content to go out to all the summer students to let them know what's available in the community and then 
on Friday, June 7th, we're going to host a kind of welcome social at the Nature Center. So if you haven't heard about that, talk to me afterwards and I can give you my card. Um, we're going to have different stations for students to visit to learn about resources in the community and then also <coughs> be a nice get together for students to meet each other and meet different community representatives. So Now so that is fun. the same night as the Chamber Business Award. <laughs> yeah. So we're all faced with some hard decisions. <laughs> Just, just putting it out there. Yep, that's the, the no. week that three quarters of the student population arrives. So, yeah, unfortunately, there's some overlap, but um, should still be a lot of fun. Oh, I think, so. I think so. I think it's a, so, a wonderful time. thing um, for the student 4 30 population. Four thirty to seven. It's a stunning facility and um, a really incredible asset for your community. It's great to see all the programming that you do and the investment you're putting in the future. So, um, I will just point out a couple of quick things and then. Yeah. Tell you some minute to talk. So we have uh, business cards. Obviously, you're welcome to contact us. This is um, our call it some of our 20 ways or uh, free ways New Mexico True can work for you. So feel free to pick one of these up. They're a little bit destination focused, so you know use it as a little checklist. See what applies to you and implement. You know, pick three things. Pick two things to do. Do them. Try them. Let us know you're doing them, <laughs> and so that we, we can maximize on that. And then this is uh, more about our New Mexico True Certified program. If you know people who are making things, anything from um, you know, you might be growing apples or making angel decorations. You have Zia jewelry. You have pottery. You have textiles. You have salsa. Um, you have goats. Uh, there, is, <laughs> there is a lot. We have uh, 300 partners and um, thousands of products. And if there's anybody you know who's who's doing anything, there's some criteria. There's an online application. You can look on our website for more information. I will mention our industry <coughs> partner website. So our main website, NewMexico.org, that Taylor talked a lot about, gets over four million visitors a year. So if you want to be seen through us, that is how to do it, absolutely make that listing um, be present to win. And then also our industry site, which is newmexico.org slash industry, tons of, like actually an overwhelming amount of resources and tools, research um, information, old recorded how-to webinars, and just and more information about grant opportunities, programs that we do, upcoming events you can tap into, but really, these three women in this room are your great conduit to the department and anything that we can do at New Mexico True. So talk to your regional board members, your county, your chamber, and, uh, and we are here and happy to help. Now it's <laughs> We work really closely together. It's a small town, so we... Oh, down here, sorry. So I've got some great ideas just sitting here listening to them and then listening to the people in the room that I don't want to forget. But one of the first things I want to say is that we are going to hold, our branding uh, consultants are holding a New Mexico Tourism Department workshop for businesses to help you get on the industry listing, bring your laptops, they will help you walk you through that process to see if your business is true certifiable so that you can actually help you get on it. And so you walk out of that workshop having made a lot of um, you know, progress on the tools that are available to you that they offer here. So I really encourage you to come as, again Thursday the 23rd. It's going to be at um, Project Y. And it's going to be in the morning, <coughs> 9 to noon. And so you can register through the chambers. It's, a, it's one of the Project Y's Business Basics series. And, it's going to be hosted by the chamber, and uh, that's where you can get the information. She's going to push the information out to she Ren, your, your, your person here. <laughs> um, one thing that I just thought about is uh, also the advocacy pride that she was talking about. That's where, uh, that is how, the way we're capturing that is through our branding initiative and the Discoveries Action Team. These people, this is just people from the community, they're businesses, they're residents, they're coming together for an hour and a half. A meeting is today at 11, from 11 to 12.30 over at Fuller Lodge. We do place making, place marketing. We focus on ideas to make Los Alamos a better place to live, work, play, or stay, and or all of them. And 
the students, uh, trying to encourage the students or to get the information out to the students because of feedback that we've received through the community. They, they didn't know things were going on. They leave at the end of the summer and, you know, don't know this. So we've set up this student, um, what do we call it, a, a kind of a packet of information that's it's on the website and it'll be a link that they can access even after they leave to find out when they come back to Los Alamos what's going on and that kind of thing. So it's something that started from an idea at the Discoveries Action Team that's going to, it's sustainable. We're going to keep it going and it's managed through the county and has somebody who is going to maintain it and has resources behind it. So I really, if you have any idea or, or, or want to brainstorm ideas to, to solve a problem, I really encourage you to come to these Discovery Action Team. It comes over lunch, bring your lunch. And, um, and we've gotten some great things done on that um, committee. And then one thing I, that the Nature Center does very well is anytime they're at a meeting and they say, you know, we need to have another meeting, you can have it at our place. Come have it at the Nature Center. Think of your businesses. And if you have a space, we are very short on meeting space in our town. Always looking for it. So if you have a room that you can dedicate or put it out there, that's one way to get your business out there, to meet different people, and to um, really serve a need within the community. We put you on a list, it'll come up through the chamber, through the um, visitor centers, and when people are looking, we need a space for 10 people. If you have a small little conference room that works and you want to put it out there, um, that's just a really good idea that I would suggest. So. Um, those are the main things I wanted to put out there. I want to make sure we have time for questions or if you have any more ideas that you want to put out there. Um, so this workshop Kelly referred to on the 23rd, it's not open yet on the Chamber website. I'll have it up open by the end of the day, but it's a really great opportunity to work with these guys hands-on and have them help you take advantage of all of the things they, can, they, can, they have to offer to help you promote your business through the tourism department. Well, and we know the biggest problem is for, for business owners um, is taking the time to, right. to do something like this, and to come to something like this this morning, um, or a Discoveries Action Team meeting. But this, we're hoping to try to, we're trying to craft these ones that are, um, I don't know who here's met Jim Glover and Marianne uh, Tenenbaum, but they're our branding consultants, and they've met with a lot of people through our town trying to identify places where we can make things better. Um, and make it a better interface for people coming here. I don't know if you, how you are, but if, you know, when I go to another town, I really want to know the little secret spot. I don't want to go necessarily to a franchise. I want to go to the, the little deli. I want to, it's, it's a local place, I, uh, the best coffee place where all the locals hang out. And as people who have pride in their community, that's my why. I'm so proud of everything, of the people here and um, I'm so excited for first timers to come here when they are expecting, you know, whatever's in their head for government and Manhattan Project and the lab, and to see 360 degree views pretty much anywhere in this town of amazing scenery. And then they meet the people, they always leave here raving. And so that's why we try to. You know, use every opportunity available to us. <laughs> we're always in, uh, in with them. Uh, Linda Madison here and I are always like scheduling meetings. Well, what we, can we do to get more, you know, in front of mind? So we're trying to. They're the New Mexico Tourism Department is kind of. They uh, go to <coughs> Texas, Colorado, our main markets. We follow them wherever they go, especially drive traffic. And we try to, they kind of soften the market. People are open to New Mexico. Wow, that's a really beautiful place. We try to kind of follow in there, follow their lead with um, the Cooperative Marketing Grant. Um, we place uh, different digital media, print media. We use the New Mexico Tourism Adventure Guide and all of those things to try to, as soon as they, they're looking at New Mexico, yeah, that might be a place to listen then, or to visit. Then they think, well, some of us. That looks like a pretty place too. I never knew anything about it. So it's like, uh, that's that's one of the ways we try to use it. And this Saturday, we're going to be filming. Um, I, I really urge you to go onto the website to look at the New Mexico True Story videos. I mean, they just make you want to cry. They're beautiful. 
And we've got the videographer from the department coming and filming in Los Alamos this Saturday. And they're going to do a 30 and 60 second spot um, featuring one of our ultra marathoners, kind of following her to show how beautiful this place is and what a family friendly place it is to visit. So, and our outdoor recreation, which is becoming really huge in the state. So, yay! Yay! Mm -hmm. I highly encourage you to sign up for this uh, workshop on the 23rd. Like I said, I'll have that open this afternoon. And I also want to just, yes, Carolyn. Where, you are, where did the greatest number of visitors come from nationally and uh, like nationally and also internationally? Do you keep stats? We do. And I don't know about the, well, I just know one thing. In the last several months, Texas, we, we, almost, we talk about this in our Lodgers Tax Advisory Board meetings. Well, Texas has been running, you know, for the last six months, and Colorado just beat them out this last month. So we take these, you know, we look at that kind of um, data on a monthly basis at our largest tax advisory board meetings. Internationally, Germany is a huge, uh, huge country that people come from, but all over. It'd be surprising. You can provide, that's, uh, that's public data. We put it out on our largest tax advisory board um, reports. We can look at it, but they, we should get that out for everybody so they you're know. You're looking for a good time, Carolyn. You should go to the lodger's tax. Because <laughs> <laughs> nothing says a good time like that. And one more idea that I forgot to mention: now, um, the they're expecting uh, Albuquerque in the state of New Mexico is hosting the National Senior Games um, on June 13th through the 24th, something like that, and down at the Albuquerque Convention Center. We, Los Alamos, are have, we have a table there for six days. And uh, I was just thinking, we need to make sure all of our senior um, facilities and businesses are, you know, are, are represented there in all of our services. So we're going to have a table there. We're right at the registration area, and we're taking full advantage. Um, we're trying to get information now so we can profile our senior athletes. So we have so many here in Los Alamos. That's one of the things. So I'll make sure that we reach out and get a hold of everybody so that we can really um, promote all the services we provide. Super. Thank okay. you. We also have data on our website, so newmexico.org slash industry on the industry website. So we break it down by county. If you want to compare and contrast yourself, maybe to Santa Fe County or neighboring counties, Rio Arriba, that's definitely accessible. Sometimes it's a little hard to look through maybe four to pages just to find your county. But if you send me an email, I'll be happy to send you those targeted counties that you're looking for. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And you can also, it, it goes on to actually tell you what people are doing when they come here, what their biggest travel driver is, and more demographic information. We have a research director, Kelly knows. Really Victoria well. Gray. Yeah. I mean, every everybody at the state tourism department, they are top notch. We are so lucky. I mean, it's a yeah. 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 Um, The state tourism is, has come a long ways. I've been in the business specifically in tourism for over thirty years, and when I started out. Um, in Los Alamos, I had to, first of all, be the one selling Los Alamos by somebody wanted to come and do a tour here. But I had to do a lot of sock gap stuff and, and do what the market was looking for at that time because of what was advertised. And it wasn't Los Alamos, it wasn't the four corners of the state, um, it was Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people just say Santa Fe and would equate that with they came to New Mexico. And so now it's a lot different. Um, under, well, uh, Rebecca Latham first, and now under the new tourism. Jen Schreier. Jim, yeah. And these are these are really neat people, you know, yeah. and then getting some funding so that we can do these things, keep those statistics, and figure out how that's going to feed into marketing has helped us a lot up here. And our local, I call them Team Los Alamos. <laughs> Yeah, they're standing right there, standing right there. And, and some other people in town that collaborate. And you mentioned the collaboration, and locally there's a lot of collaboration. And um, when I don't see that happening in other places, it's, it's, it's troublesome. You know, it's, it's counterproductive. And here, 
in a place that doesn't see tourism, and, well now it does, we have a tourism uh, strategic plan. And that, that's a huge step in the right direction for our local government to understand that tourism is something that should be a factor, another box of economic development. And even though our housing crunch and all that, and we don't have enough hotel rooms, and I think the, you know, the, the next step to getting more money in our local economy from tourism would be some hotel rooms, because those people who are staying here are going to spend more money here. We're working on it. We are working on it. We're working on it. And this is coming from our Tourism Professional of the Year. That's uh, right. Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And I, I do want to just take a moment. So all of these students that you've seen come through here over the last few months, we, um, we are trying to work on kind of a mentorship program for these folks. If you are interested in participating in this, there is a meeting tomorrow at the high school um, about the mentorship program, uh, which is part of this group that we've been really working on the early education and uh, early education college career academy. So, uh, so if you have an interest in taking on a student, it's it's a, a really small commitment on your part, but makes a huge difference in a student's life to kind of uh, be able to guide, give them a little bit of guidance. And uh, if any of you have an interest in it, please let me know. Uh, I'd be delighted to, to go to the meeting with you tomorrow. So. Let them be your tourism marketing person. There you go. There you go. So the, these kids, uh, if they can, they're amazing with social media. So. Just really quickly, I mean, yes. the practical experience that they would get. I'm a business teacher at the high school, so the practical experience. Yeah. And yes, they know social media better than any of us old. Than any of us ever will. Right. So, so. Anyhow, let me know if you have any interest in that. And please join me in saying thank you to the tourism team.